use headphones for best experience. show you this map or this atlas it says here taxi map or address map of greater Stockholm I just bought this one. I'm really interested in maps of Stockholm or Greater Stockholm. Stockholm is where I live. And I think it's really fascinating to look at historical maps over the surrounding areas. So, for example, if I want to take a biking trip somewhere. It's always so fun to explore not just how it looks today, the area I visit, but also how it used to look in the past and uh, look for clues and uh, traces and old buildings and such things. And this one was actually a very beautiful book, I think. Nice texture. Also, the letters here are like um, a relief. You can feel, even if you close your eyes, you can kind of read, touching the letters like this. So here we have an I, I think. I'm closing my eyes now. Not very easy. The R, perhaps, and also <laughs> I know what it says. So the T here, the A, the N, Said, I'm still closing my eyes. Uh, ad address carta. But these letters are smaller and not as easy to 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 feel the shape. And then I guess it says Should have an S here somewhere. T. 
息，好，啊Quite lost now. L or K, perhaps H, maybe. Here we have an O. This is how it feels. O L. This must be H. This diagonal. Can't figure out what letter I have. Has this diagonal? Can it be the S? Maybe it is an S. T. O. C. Yes, it is. K. Stockholm. Sure at all. Okay, I'll open my eyes. Yeah, it says over, of course, over, greater, ever, stor. When I had closed my eyes, I somehow looked for just the letters S, G, O, R. I forgot this word, over. You can see that this uh, book is from 1964. And um, here's the index section. Starting with A, B, C, D, E, F. I think it's really beautiful, this. lines that uh, like moves downwards like this G
no addresses or streets starting with the letter Q in Greater Stockholm at this point. itself. Stockholm, also in the word for greater, store. T, U, V, no W, the three last letters from the Swedish alphabet. Three additional vowels. O. listed street name in this index is Överskärar Gränd page 50 Överskärar Gränd Look it up. Fifty. That's the very last page, probably. Oh, there is an uh, fifty. Ah, I see. It's in the old town. It's in the very center of the city. So the, the last map. In this atlas is um, like a zoomed in map of the old town in Stockholm. And the old town is in the very center where we have the royal castle and um, the old church and a lot of old churches. So this, this was basically the whole city in medieval times. So P2. job. I will uh, take a look here in Google Translate. Yeah, 
cutter in English. So yeah, it's like producing, creating clothes. Cut the fabric. Then someone who was doing this as a craft, as a job, they were called över skärare, cutter. I think a lot of the small streets here in the old town have like names. Yeah, here, skräddar, skräddare, tailor. Tailor are like uh, old um, titles and for crafts, various crafts. Yeah, here we have skomakar, grand, shoemaker or cobbler. So my idea for today's video was to just show you some uh, examples of streets from this book. that it's uh, the greater Stockholm and that, that it's uh, that it is showing the yeah I mean the greater Stockholm not just the center of Stockholm there are so many maps of just the center of a city but this one because it's for taxi drivers is uh, you can find detailed maps over the entire area and of course today it's no problem to find these kind of maps and just Google Maps or OpenStreetMap or anything. But from 1964 I think it's quite rare to find. And uh, it's nice to, to have the names of the streets labeled. What the, the streets were called in 1964. Of course a lot of them still have the same names today, but a lot of them also don't. And there were not a lot of motorways and freeways at this point. They had just started to build those types of roads, so there are old... Uh, the old roads are still the main roads at this point. So this is the northern part. Here's a legend. And you will see there are a lot of planned roads. They had started to plan a lot of motorways. Some of them were not uh, realized, I mean, they were not uh, completed, or just they, they stopped as a, just a plan. In the 1960s there were a lot of traffic planning for, for car traffic. white orange lines railroad black and subway or tram blue and here are some boundaries for cities And 
this light blue dotted dashed line. Something I'm really interested in as well. The boundary for recreation areas. Nature. Reserves and such things. And yeah, since this is a taxi map, this uh, blue star label here is station for taxi cars. These black roads are stairs or other type of um, stops. I mean, you can't drive on those with a car. So they are uh, marked here, quite visible. So taxi drivers, yeah, they couldn't pass that road. Here we have the southern part of Greater Stockholm. So it's not just the, the city of Stockholm, also the the bordering um, municipalities or communes. And they are their own cities with their own city rights, I guess. We have the border for actual Stockholm here at this point. So this is Stockholm. This is Nacka. This is Tyresö. This is Österhaninge. This is Huddinge. Botkyrka, Ekerö, you can see it says kommun, that means uh, commune or municipality. here that there are at this map there are a lot of a lot more of these adjacent cities their own cities um, because it's from 1964 and I know that in 1971 there were a lot of reorganization and there were a lot of these uh, uh, municipalities uh, sur surrounding Stockholm were merged into bigger uh, entities. They were like united. So yeah, Saltsjöbo, 
Sampadan also was here, its own city. Today, Sathibadan and Bu are both part of Nakka. For example, and uh, also I know that Stocksund and Yushholm are today part of parts of Tandarin. So I know that Faringsa is today part of Ekerö Kommun. Yeah, and now I actually got an idea. I would like to choose an area where the names of the streets, or the, I mean the streets, are named after um, Old Norse mythology characters. Because I've noticed that there are a lot of areas around Stockholm where you can find those types of names. Uh, for example, Odin, Thor, Frey, those uh, deities from Old Norse mythology. So they have named streets in various places all around Sweden, I guess, but in Stockholm there are also a lot of places where you suddenly stab stumble upon those names again and again. So let's say, for example, Tyr. I think Tyr is a, is a character from Norse mythology, but now I have to check. It's not the most common one. Tyr. Asir goddess in Nordic mythology. Uh, no, not goddess, a uh, god. Uh, Asir god. Son of Odin and the god of war. His weapon is the sword. Yeah, he's a warrior. Here. Let's see if we can find his streets. So we have Tyrgatan, Tyr Street. I guess it's in. No, it doesn't say where it is, which area. Page 22. Then we have Tyrvägen in Bo. And also a Tyrvägen in Ljusholm. Let's start with those two. Let's start with Tyrvägen, Ljusholm. 11 and A18.
Okay, so here we have a lake. It could be a lake. And a small beach for swimming. By this lake. And uh, it looks like there are some wetlands um, surrounding it. Like a marsh type of landscape. We have a park, Ekeby Park. So it's in the area called Ekeby. We have a station here, a railway station, called Jusholms. Ekeby. Stop, stop. Like a tram stop or railway stop. Not exactly station, so it's a smaller version of just a sim quite a simple stop. It's in Jusholms city. So that's why the stop is called Jusholms Ekeby, not just Ekeby. Maybe there are other areas called Ekeby around Stockholm. So, to be clear, it was named Jusholms Ekeby. And here we have a road called Tyrvägen. I guess named after this war, war go, uh, god. Here's the station street. And the post office close to the station. I guess you could call it the station. Here we have Old Ekeby. So I guess uh, it's a house, for like a old uh, mansion or I don't know what type of house it is. It looks quite small. Okay, yeah, here we have Ekeby. This is probably a bigger mansion or something. And this is even older than that one. Old Ekeby. So, I guess these houses have given name to this area. a lot of streets and uh, houses. Th this orange color means it's there are houses here. People live here. Here we have a road called Freke. Rekevägen. Frodevägen. Ischavägen. Völsungavägen. I'll show you again. Frekevägen. Frodevägen. Ischavägen. Völsungavägen. These names sound quite... Not familiar, but... Um, to me it sounds like uh, Old Norse types of names or very historical Nordic, Swedish names and names, uh, like not names that you hear a lot today, 
but names you can hear in old myths and sagas and stories from the past, the Vikings era, such things. So Valsunga, no idea what that is, and I'll take a look here. Sunga Saga The Völsunga Saga is a legendary saga, late 13th century poetic ren rendition in Old Norse of the origin and decline of the Völsung clan, including the story of Sigurd and Brynhild. An example of an heroic saga that deals with Germanic heroic legend. And Frode, who was Frode? that they have they have actually been a uh, king called that it could be just myth in Norse mythology so there are a lot of myths around through them in those Icelandic, Icelandic sagas, I guess. Snorri Sturlason's work from the Ed Edda. From like... A thousand years ago. was compiled around 1220, the, the Edda. But there were stories in it that had been uh, like an or oral tradition stories. So they, these are really old Viking stories. It says that Frode should have lived while Caesar Augustus would have been the Roman emperor. According to myth. The first Roman emperor from 27 BC to 14 AD Augustus. So while he was an emperor in Rome, Frode could have been uh, a Danish king. Okay, and here we have Irsha, Irshavägen. Irsha is actually a name not super uncommon. think female name it derives from uh, old Norse word that has to do with the uh, Ursus that means bear and uh, the word could also have something to do with the word 
Ir. Ir. Dizzy. The wild one. So it's a it's a girl's name I used today as well. But it has uh, old Norse origin. And Freke. I don't think I've ever heard Freke, but it really sounds like like an old Norse name to me. Okay, Freki or Freke. We have Geri and Freki in Norse mythology, both meaning the ravenous or greedy one, the two wolves, which are said to accompany the god Odin. They are attested in the Poetic Edda, a collection of epic poetry compiled in the 13th century from earlier traditional sources. In the prose Edda, written in the 13th century by Snorri Sturlason, and in the poetry of Skalds. Okay, so it's a, a pair here. It's a Geri and Freki. The pair has been compared to similar figures found in Greek, Roman, and Vedic mythology and may also be connected to beliefs surrounding the Germanic the Germanic wolf warrior bands the wolf heathener the names Geri and Freki have been interpreted as meanings either the greedy greedy one or the ra ravenous one the name Geri can be traced back to the proto-germanic adjective Keras attested in Burgundian Kirf Old Norse Ker and Old High German Ker or Kiri all of which mean greedy the name Freki can be traced back to the Proto-Germanic adjective Frekas, attested in Gothic Fai o Friks. Covitus avaricious. Old Norse Frekr means greedy. Old English Freck Desirous uh, Greedy Gluttonous Odysseus and Old High German Fre means greedy as well. John Lindo interprets interprets both Old Norse names as normalized adjectives. Bruce Lincoln further traces Keri back to Proto-Indo-European stem Ker, which is the same as uh, the found in Kamr, a name referring to the hound closely associated with the events of Ragnarök. I don't know if you have heard about Ragnarök. Uh, so that was interesting. There's a word here I would like to look up. Uh, ravenous. What does that mean exactly? Ravenous, okay. Extremely hungry. Klupsk. Mm -hmm. In Swedish. Klupsk. 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 If someone is 
very glupsk, glupsk. This person is extremely hungry and can't stop eating. Glupande, not the Swedish name. To be glupande, or to have a glupande. So we have a lot of Nordic mythology in Jusholm's Ekeby, as you can see. And now... Let's look up Tyrvägen. Seven P B forty two. strange name actually can't think of any word other word right now in Swedish uh, with two letter O after each other it's more common in English I guess Boo. if you drop one O we have just boo that means to inhabit so here we have a little small lake Tresk Tresk is actually like marsh but it's a small pond Sarv Tresk Sarv here we have Hasse Ludzwegen. An area called Nybakka. And uh, this area today is uh, very different. the late 1960s and uh, early 1970s, I guess, a completely new area was built here. So there are... the landscape has changed... has changed dramatically since... since this point. It's an area called Orminge. Now we will try to find Tyr Vägen. Here it is, Tyr Vägen. And uh, also in this area I immediately notice a lot of uh, old Norse related names here. 
Nimrodsvägen, Idunvägen, Åsastigen. Lokevägen. Loke is a really famous god in Norse mythology. Åsa is actually a very common girl's name, a woman's name, but I know it has uh, also old Norse origin, no, not old Nordic name. It's not also it's not very common to have names starting with the letter O. They're very typical for Swedish letter, not in many other alphabets. There are some names starting with O. Åke is a, is a male name. Åsa is a female name. Um, Nimrod. I want to look up Nimrod. I've forgotten who that is or what it is. Ah, this is not. This is a uh, Bible from the Bible. Biblical has something I can read about the Tower of Babel. Nimrod, I thought it it, uh, it sounded very Nordic. Maybe I just mixed that up. Biblical fig figure, according to the book of Genesis and book of Chronicles. The son of Cush. Nimrod was also described as a king in the land of Shinar in Mesopotamia. The Bible... states that he was a mighty hunter before the Lord and began to be mighty in the earth. Extra-biblical traditions associating him with the Tower of Babel led to his reputation as a king who was rebellious against God. This article is about the biblical king. For other uses, see Nimrod. Yeah, but it must be this Nimrod. I guess. But this uh, street is referred to the name of this street. Don't you think? Historians have failed to match Nimrod with historically attested figures. Nimrod may not represent any one personage known to history, and various authors have identified him with, uh, with uh, several real and fictional figures of Mesopotamian antiquity, including the Mesopotamian god Ninurta or the conflation of the two Akkadian kings Sargon, his grandson Naram Sin, and Tukulti Ninurta, 1243 to 1207 BCE. Yeah, so this is a really, really old uh, figure from old Mesopotamia origins, possibly from that time and that culture. It's really interesting. And here we have Eden. Eden in 
Norse mythology, Ethan is a goddess associate, associated with apples and youth. Ethan is attested in the poetic Edda, compiled in the 13th century from earlier traditional sources, and the prose Edda written in the 13th century by Snorri Sturluson. In both sources she is described as the wife of the skaldic god Bragi, and in the prose Edda also as a keeper of apples and grantor of eternal youthfulness. Now I start to think about the Greek myth where someone is guarding apples, golden apples. That also is part of the, the stories about Heracles. Who was that? Yeah, Heracles, 11th labor, the apples of the Hesperides, Hes Hesperides, 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 I'm not sure how to, how to pronounce it really, Hesperides. Brage is a skaldic god of poetry in Norse mythology. Luke. a god in Norse mythology. According to some sources, Luke is the son of Far Pauti. Yeah, that's a Jötun, like a giant. And uh, Laufe, mentioned as a goddess. And the brother of Helblindi. Hel And um, Bileister. Loki is married to Sigun, and they have a son, Narfi and Nari. Or maybe it's the same person. By the Jotun Angroda. Ang Angerboda. Loki is the father of Hel. Hel, the wolf Fenrir. And the word ser world serpent, Jörmungandr. Loki, in the form of a mare, was impregnated by the stallion Svad Svadilfari. Yeah, 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 Loki is a mother as well. Yeah. It's a very strange myth. It's a mother of a horse. So he gave birth to the eight-legged horse Sleipnir. Loki is referred to as the father of Vali in Prose, Prose Edda. Though this source also refers to Odin as the father of Vali twice. And Vali is found mentioned as a son of Loki only once. Yeah, there are a lot of myths, interesting, strange, fun myths about Loki. I read some of them. And 
the last thing I would like to do is to just look up Tyrgatan. So here we have Tyr Road, Tyr Road, but this maybe could be translated as Tyr Street. 22 A 35 Yeah, here we have a small, really small street here, Tyrgata. I didn't know it existed actually, but it's in the center of Stockholm. Close to Odin, Odin Street. That's a really big main street. Named after the great god, most famous, uh, one of the most famous gods. Odin. Also we have Frigagatan, Sköldungagatan, Baldersgatan. So a lot of Nordic of the Norse names here. Close to the eastern railway station in Stockholm. I think that was everything for today. Maybe I can continue to take, to read a bit from this atlas. I also ordered another atlas from 1944. But I haven't got it yet. But then we could like compare areas, streets, names. these two years, two different years in the history. No. Can you see that it's like three-dimensional here? You can relief shape or I mean relief print somehow. Stor. Thank you so much for watching, sleep well, see you soon, take care, stay safe.